What's good everyone? It's Johnny Lim, the backpacking biologist, the hot chocolate Asian, your Sherpa to the natural world. And you see today I have my trekking poles, I got my backpack on. That's because I'm doing an overnight backpacking trip in Yellowstone National Park. That's right, the oldest national park in the world, not just the United States, the world. This became a national park in 19, no my God, no, 1872. How crazy is that? I'm excited because this is my second time here at the park. The first time I came, I only spent maybe like a day and a half. We just spent the night in the car and uh, didn't do too much exploring, but I'm so excited now because I'm finally backpacking, uh, which both has its, I think, appeal and also its concerns. As you can see right here, that's my bear spray. Why? Because there are grizzly bears here, there are black bears here. Speaking of animals, check this out. That's, that's poop. Bison poop, dung. And that's just in the beginning of the trailhead. Now you see, I have no problem with black bears. Um, it's really grizzly bears I have a problem with. If I were to say I'm scared of any animal on land, probably gonna be a grizzly bear along with giant centipedes. Luckily, they're not really around here. It's kind of nice, you know, the, the weather's warm right now. It's supposed to get really cold tonight. It's supposed to snow, actually. Get down to the 30s, maybe upper 20s which uh, I am prepared for, but if I can be honest, the last, I think, five backpacking trips, I've just been kind of cold and miserable. Oh, my feet are numb. Ah! Last night, it was cold. <laughs> so I think my next big trip has to be like Hawaii or something, <laughs> somewhere in Fiji. I wanna do some island biology, that would be really cool. Now, speaking of bears, uh, I, I did something, um, I wouldn't say reckless, but I, let's just say it's not smart. Now, I've been driving all the way from California through Idaho, and I have a lot of food in my car, and I have a cooler, and you're not supposed to leave food in your car for obvious reasons. I mean, I've heard stories of bears breaking into cars and tearing through back seats just to get a candy bar. And I have hot dogs and bacon and even trout eggs <laughs> in in my cooler so what i did is i wrapped the hatch with a uh, with duct tape and hopefully that will seal in all the scents but i'm really crossing my fingers praying to the forest gods to just protect my car for one night that would kind of ruin my trip so this is the hell roaring creek suspension bridge and uh, man, it's so high up, you can see the water. Kind of dark, it's murky, it's been raining and snowing, so it's all washed off. And there's a lot of snow melt coming down from the mountains. But um, as I'm walking on here, the suspension bridge is moving up and down a bit. Kind of took me by surprise. I've been camping every year of my life, but most of that has been car camping. I didn't start backpacking until 2016, and, and one of the reasons why I love backpacking is because you can go places where cars can't take you. And I'm only two miles into this hike, and look at this view. These are the kind of views you can only get while backpacking. It's amazing. I can see for miles. I see cliffs and mountains and all these trees. It kind of reminds me of, uh, you remember the movie The Land Before Time? In the end when Littlefoot is like looking for all the other dinosaurs and, and they, it opens up to a valley where there's a whole bunch of dinosaurs grazing. It's kind of like an oasis. It's kind of how I feel about this valley. Like there's bison everywhere. There's bison in the water, bison walking with their children or kids. I don't know what you call a baby bison. But, you know, you get it. That's beautiful. 
So I've come across my first bison right there. Can you see him? So this is where actually the trail splits. I'm supposed to go left. The other trail goes that way. I'm glad I don't have to go that way because there's about a little bit more than a dozen of them. And they're big. Bison, I mean, they're huge. They can run 40 miles per hour. And do not underestimate the speed of a bison. Check this out. This tree doesn't have pubes. This is actually just bison hair. Oh, it feels so squishy. And what they did is they just found this branch and started rubbing and rubbing. And I know it's bison hair and not burr hair because all oh, the bison poop right here. And there's a lot. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. So that valley was really nice, but ever since I reached that valley, I've just been climbing and climbing and climbing. Like the climbing won't stop. It just keeps on going up and I don't know when it's going to stop. I didn't know what to expect from this trail. Honestly, I just called the ranger station. They said, uh, you should go over here to this area. I couldn't find any maps on it. Um, so I had no idea what the elevation gain was. Oh my God, it just keeps on going up. Okay, we are finally here. It is currently 6.40 p.m. The sun isn't gonna set for another two hours, probably. Um, so that should give us a lot of time to get our camp tasks done. So when you're in a place like this with a lot of bears, and bears are always gonna be the number one thing in your mind, uh, the first thing you gotta do when you get to camp is hang up your food. Now, the cool thing about the sites here is they have these kind of contraptions. They look like, um, I don't know, like the pie symbol that you could actually hang up your food. So it's actually required that you bring rope with you. Next, I'll be setting up my tent. That shouldn't take too long. And then finally, I'm gonna collect wood for the fire. This is one of three campsites in this area that allows for fires because it has a fire ring. The people before me left some firewood too, so I don't have to collect too much. Uh, but I'm still gonna need some time to collect some firewood. And then finally, I can eat and relax. So. Let's get started. So now I'm gonna show you my hanging system and what I use to hang up my food. So what I use is a dry bag. This type is the seal line and it's 10 liters. It's cool because it's completely waterproof. I could use it on a boat and I store all my food in here. And what's also cool is it clips to form a ring. So knowing that will dictate what kind of knots we use for our rope. This is a rope I have, I have 60 feet of rope which is super overkill for what we're gonna use today. But if you're in a pinch, you could cut some line. And number two, if you're gonna be camping somewhere else that doesn't have this kind of setup, you might have to find a random tree to do it and the more line, the better in this case. Perfect. So now we're gonna take one end and this is the end that's gonna to attach to the bag. So since the bag already has a, it forms a kind of a loop this way, right? With the buckle. I want to form a loop on this end, okay? So essentially the buckle will just buckle in between every time, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end, kind of double it up like this. Make sure you give yourself enough line. And you're going to take the loop here and you're just, you're just going to do an overhand knot, okay? So behind and then through. Now you have a loop form. Okay, and this is really strong in that way. You can now take this 
and attach it. Perfect. So it's getting kind of chilly, but I am done with my tent. I got water. All I gotta do now is collect firewood. And I brought my trusty saw, best saw I've ever owned. And all I gotta do is just gather up some wood that I see and maybe I'll cut off some branches. The rule is, is that you can only use wood that's already on the ground. So if I find a dead standing tree, I can't cut it. I'm just gonna collect branches. I'm gonna collect large pieces of wood and I'm gonna bring them back to camp and start processing all those. This is the amount of wood I have right now, and ideally I'd like to triple that amount. And I'd like to start this fire as late as possible. And that will guarantee as long as a fire as I can. I'm finally done. Ooh, there's a mosquito. Ah, get away from me. But as you can see, there's a ton of wood and I am exhausted. I'm gonna grab my food from the dry bag. I'm gonna make some dehydrated food, probably gonna have mac and cheese tonight. Then I'm just gonna take it easy, read a book, I brought a Kindle, and go to sleep early, hopefully. And I'll catch you tomorrow. Good morning, ever. oh. Oh no. Good morning everyone. So I slept pretty well, but I guess it snowed on me last night. I didn't even wake up. I was super cozy and there's a bunch of snow on my tent. So let's take a look outside and see what it looks like. Oh my God, it's still snowing. <sighs> oh, whoa. So cool. I can't believe it, it's still snowing, that's crazy. The forecast said it was only gonna snow last night, like from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., but we're still going. Oh, it's so pretty. Can't wait to see what the valley looks like. So I'm just gonna grab my food, I'm gonna make uh, some breakfast, and start heading back. Hopefully I can catch some animals in the snow, that'd be really cool too. This is by far the best breakfast backpacking I've ever had. I get this all the time now. It's a uh, backpacker's pantry, granola with blueberries, almond milk. Super good. downhill is so much easier but the exciting thing is we're coming up to some bison right now too so hopefully we're not too close you know they they have a bubble I think it's not too large of a bubble you know like you can get somewhat near them and they won't charge but I'm not willing to find out how close I can get Bison are huge animals. Now, as you can see, they don't have so much fur. I mean, it's not like, if you look at like a grizzly bear, if you look at other large animals or other animals in general that are designed for the cold, they have a lot of fur to keep them warm. But bison, they really don't. It's kind of just like they have like a thin layer of hair and they have that mane. The reason why they can stay warm is because they're so large. In biology, there's something called the surface area to volume ratio. And bison have a really small surface area to volume ratio. 
To fully understand the surface area to volume ratio, or S over V, we need to examine a cube. This cube is one inch by one inch. And to calculate its surface area, you find the area of one square and multiply it by six because there are six sides. The surface area of this cube is six inches squared. To calculate the volume, you cube the width, which would be one inch cubed. That means the S over V for this cube is six inches. But what happens if we use a two inch cube? The surface area becomes 24 inches squared and its volume becomes eight inches cubed. The surface area to volume ratio would be 24 over eight, which can be reduced to three. Notice how the S over V became smaller as the cube grew larger. What about a hundred inch cube? The S over V would end up being 0 0.006. Notice how the larger an object gets, the smaller its S over V becomes. This is because as an object gets larger, its volume disproportionately becomes bigger than its surface area. This is the advantage large animals, like bison, have over smaller ones. The larger the volume an object has, the more heat it can carry. Think about a giant pool and a cup of water. If I were to measure the temperature of both, the pool would be 70 degrees and the cup of water 70 degrees. What's gonna get warmer faster? Well, the cup of water, because it doesn't have as much volume to hold that heat. We call that a heat capacity. So the larger the animal, the more heat they can retain. So something like an elephant has a tiny S over V. Although elephants are large and they have a large surface area, they have even more volume to hold that heat. So an elephant doesn't get cold just because of their size. And a bison doesn't get cold because of its size. Of course it does have fur, of course it does have things to help insulate it. Its size is what keeps it warm. Well, I have great news. My car didn't get broken into by a bear. Oh, that was such a great trip. I didn't know what to expect. Saw awesome animals, saw a huge valley, a lot of snow, a lot of sun. Man, I love Yellowstone, but hey, thanks for joining me. I'm the Backpacking Biologist, and I'll catch you next time.